In the year 1980, a mother smothered her infant son inside of their home and blamed his death on a medical disorder. 27 years later, she would finally be charged with murder, but not before killing again. This is the deranged case of Shirley Winters. Hello, friend, and welcome to High Time Crime. My name's Joel, and on here I specialize in true crime and also investing all of my money into my favorite snacks. It's an investment, I swear. But today, we're going over the case of Shirley Winters. You're going to learn about a sick and deranged arsonist who also happened to be one of the worst mothers that's ever lived. For our story, we're heading to upstate New York. Upstate New York is different than the conventional idea of the state provided by New York City and has an entirely separate identity. Much of the area is pretty rural and it tends to have a more laid back and relaxed atmosphere than further south. Also, having been there a few times, I can tell you that the scenery is absolutely stunningly beautiful. And while it's definitely not a monolith, of course, in the later seasons of the year, the climate of this region is known for being very cold and unforgivable, a lot like the main perpetrator of our story today. But if you ever find yourself in upstate New York, there's certainly no shortage of things to do. You can take a trip to Howe Caverns and navigate through a series of rocky underground tunnels. You could head over to the Montezuma National Wildlife Refuge and witness thousands of different birds. You could stop by the Watkins Glen State Park, a photographer's dream filled with beautiful natural scenery and a souvenir shop. You could even visit one of the most famous locations in the entire country, a little place known as Niagara Falls. And for that one, you are definitely going to want to bring an umbrella or a towel or something. But unfortunately, despite how fun all of these things sound, none of them are the reason as to why we're in town today. Shirley Baron Winters was born on February 27th of 1958 to her parents Edward Barron and Marilyn Barron. Edward had a job doing drywall and home improvements while his wife Marilyn helped to raise the couple's kids. Growing up, Shirley and her family lived in South Onondaga, New York. Originally, she had three siblings by the names of Peter, Joyce, and Lita. Peter was the oldest at age 11. Joyce was the second at 10. Shirley herself was the middle child at age 8. And the youngest sibling, Lita, was only 4. But in 1966, something incredibly terrible happened to Shirley's siblings that would set the tone for the rest of her life. During one snowy evening, when the young Shirley was away visiting her grandmother, Shirley's father Edward was trying to get in contact with her mother and siblings over the phone. After being unable to do so, he then called his wife, Marilyn's sister, and brother-in-law to see if they could check up on Marilyn and the children at the family's home. Evidently, Edward was away at the time, and so he couldn't go there himself. But when his wife's sister and brother-in-law got there to check on the family, it immediately became clear that something had gone horribly wrong. The door to the home was locked and the lights were off. And in order to enter, they were forced to break one of the windows. After Marilyn's family went inside, they discovered the bodies of each and every one of the kids lying dead in their beds all while still in their nightgowns. An absolute and utter tragedy. Somehow though, Shirley's mother Marilyn, who was found on the floor unresponsive, did end up escaping with her life. And following a short investigation of this incident, it was ultimately determined that the cause of death for the children was carbon monoxide poisoning something that was likely a result of the family's dog breaking an exhaust pipe underneath the home and creating a leak. But however it happened, it wouldn't even be close to the last time something bad happened around Shirley Winters. 
After this tragic incident, Shirley soon became a troubled child. According to others, she developed a reputation for biting people, digging her nails into their skin, and violently lashing out. And as a result, the kids around her gave her the nickname Squirrely Shirley. This strange behavior then lasted all throughout the rest of her childhood, and before long, Shirley started to see a therapist to help her deal with all of these problems. They diagnosed her with antisocial personality disorder and described her as having quote-unquote criminalistic-type thinking. Several years later, Shirley was on the verge of maturing into adulthood when in 1975, she got pregnant by a young man she was dating named Ronald Winters Jr. The following year, she gave birth to a little girl named Colleen, and the year after that, her and Ronald got married. Then, a little less than a year after that, they had another kid together named John, who they called Johnny. But despite this strong start to the couple's marriage, something terrible was about to happen to their two children. Something that investigators would later question whether or not Shirley had some involvement in, considering some of the details discovered many years later. So in the same year, Shirley gave birth to Johnny Winters, her newborn son. She was institutionalized for the first time for a short period of a few months. Shortly after getting out, Shirley and Ronald were now staying at Shirley's parents' cabin in Theresa, New York. During one night at the cabin when Ronald was away at work, the place suddenly caught fire with Shirley and the kids still inside. At the time it broke out, Shirley claims to have fallen asleep on the couch watching TV while the two children were trapped in the bedroom. Shirley said that once she woke up and noticed the fire, she attempted to open the door to the bedroom, but was unable to get it open due to the heavy smoke. Quickly, a neighbor and his son came by to try and help her with this, but all of their efforts failed and the children ended up passing away. Now, despite Shirley's original account of this incident, several years later, when authorities did a deeper investigation into what happened, they discovered that the bodies of the children showed evidence of blunt force trauma that occurred before the fire, therefore calling into question Shirley's potential involvement. However, she was never prosecuted nor thoroughly investigated for this as a result of a plea deal many years later. So ultimately, it wasn't definitively proven whether she was responsible or not. But another strange part about this incident, though, is that only a few days before, three of Shirley's friend's children were also involved in a house fire, and they died as well. But this was something that Shirley wasn't proven to have been responsible for either. Even so, house fires would continue to be an extremely common occurrence throughout the rest of her life. After the tragic death of their first two children, Shirley and Ronald Winters broke off their relationship but continued to remain close friends. The two of them had another child together whom they named Ronald Winters III. And unfortunately, because old habits die hard, the family was about to experience a twisted case of deja vu. Only a few short months after being born, Shirley and her newborn child were living in a trailer out in Altisco, New York. One evening, local police received a phone call from Shirley, frantically claiming that the baby had stopped breathing. When the authorities got there, they found the baby Ronald deceased. And after a short, not so thorough investigation was done, it was soon determined that he had died of something known as SIDS, which stands for Sudden Infant Death Syndrome. Now, oftentimes, the reason why this occurs is unclear, and in Shirley's case, it was even less cut and dry than they originally thought. But we'll get into that a bit later. Anyway, the baby, Ronald Winters III, was ultimately provided with a small funeral ceremony and buried right next to his siblings who had passed away just a couple years prior. So up to this point, Shirley had now experienced the strange and mysterious deaths of three of her own children, Colleen, John, and Ronald III. Despite this, over the next half decade, 
she would continue to have more kids and continue to be involved in more house fires. As for the fires, these included two more fires in February of the same year, another fire the year after that in the same place, officially becoming her second charge for arson, and lastly, a fire at an apartment building her and her kids were living at in Marcellus. And as I just mentioned, by this most recent fire, Shirley had also given birth to two more children by the same father. Their names were Joy and Ashley Winters. Joy was born in 1984, and Ashley was born in 1985. And in 1988, after nearly 10 years of being separated, yet still seeing each other here and there, Shirley and Ronald Winters officially got divorced. After having another child, of course, whom they named Clayton. But following her divorce with Ronald, Shirley then took her two girls, ages three and four, and newborn boy Clayton Winters to live with her in an apartment out in Syracuse, New York. A year later, in 1989, Shirley was scheduled to go on trial for another arson charge earlier in the year when multiple fires broke out at two different houses where she previously lived and at her aunt's garage. During the trial, the jury was originally deadlocked before eventually voting to acquit her of what would have eventually became her next arson charge. Then in November of the same year, there was yet another fire that spiraled out of control in the apartment that she was living at in Syracuse. Evidently, this one originated from the storage room of the building. According to Shirley, the moment that she smelled smoke, she grabbed her children, Ashley and Clayton, to evacuate them from the building, but was unable to find her oldest daughter, Joy, who was around five years old at the time. Regardless, Joy ended up escaping on her own accord, but had she not, things could have gotten pretty ugly. In addition, it was later reported that Joy had told people that she was ordered by Shirley to stay inside, which in that case is absolutely terrible. But as I'm sure you've realized by now, Shirley Winters is what is known as a serial arsonist. In other words, a person who repeatedly starts fires. Several years later, a psychiatrist by the name of Dr. James Knoll would eventually be able to explain why someone like her might have engaged in this repetitive criminal behavior. According to him, it relates to a concept known as repetition compulsion, whereby the patient attempts to try to master the anxiety from trauma by intentionally placing themselves in the same situation. And he says that although Shirley's siblings didn't exactly die from a fire earlier in her life, the CO2 leak was similar enough to a fire that she made a mental correlation between the two. But in addition, when Shirley was about five years old, there was an incident where her sister's dress caught on fire, so there was likely a bit of trauma from that as well. Anyway, in the meantime, the following year was 1990 and the start of a new decade. And naturally, for Shirley, the fire starter, some new fires. However, she wasn't going to be able to get away with this sort of behavior for much longer. Towards the beginning of the new year, Shirley was already part of some messy legal proceedings. In January of 1990, following another fire at her new home at Split Rock Road, a family court judge removed all three of her children from her care and awarded full custody to her ex-husband, Ronald. Immediately afterwards, Shirley admitted herself to Hutchings Psychiatric Center for a few days. Then sometime after this, while visiting the graves of her children, she attempted to jump off a nearby bridge, but failed. And almost needless to say, the rest of the year wasn't much better. On April 10th of 1990, only a month after being involved in, surprise, surprise, another house fire at a different apartment on Lakeview Avenue, Shirley was officially indicted for the arson of her old apartment building in Syracuse. Then, a few months later in the fall, the garage connected to her aunt's home caught on fire and ended up burning the entire house down. The next day, Shirley was charged by the authorities for making harassing phone calls to a neighbor, and as she was being arrested, she became belligerent with the police officer. The end result of this was her physically attacking him 
and damaging his police car. And lastly, the final heinous crime that she was involved in in the year 1990 was burning down a bowling alley, something that led to her officially being charged with arson for the fourth time. Now surprisingly, after this first year of the new decade though, Shirley's life was relatively stable for a little while. For the next few years, she wasn't starting fires, attacking police, or doing anything bad, at least publicly. And it almost appeared as if she may have been turning a corner. But then something happened in 1997 that changed everything. Shirley's mother, Marilyn, who was now a widow after her husband had passed, was driving on the road when she was involved in a seriously bad car accident. The injuries she sustained from this were really severe, and so shortly after the accident, Marilyn Barron died. And in her will, she left her home to Shirley. But as we've already learned, Shirley was not exactly a responsible person when it came to owning homes. To everyone's surprise, shortly after inheriting the house, Shirley burnt it down. Now, because her cousin was inside when it happened, and the fact that this wasn't even close to the first time that she had committed arson, the authorities were no longer going to let her off leniently. During her trial, she pleaded guilty and admitted to knowing that her cousin was still inside of the home when she set it on fire. And with these details in mind, the judge officially sentenced Shirley Winters to eight years in prison. Now by this point in Shirley's life, she had officially been diagnosed with a series of different mental disorders, including dissociative disorder, bipolar disorder, borderline personality disorder, schizophrenia, psychogenic amnesia, and pyromania. In addition, she was taking prescription medication on a daily basis alongside a habit of using narcotics and alcohol. While in prison, she agreed to do a few interviews with psychologists, and some of what she said from 1997 to 1999 was quite revealing. One thing Shirley noted was that every year on the anniversary of her siblings' deaths, she quote-unquote felt as if she was going to die. On top of this, she claimed to have nine separate personalities, and that whenever she went job searching, she made sure the workplace had a quiet room where she could be alone with just her thoughts. That way, she could more effectively respond to her hallucinations. Now, on the former claim of having nine personalities, she later retracted that and admitted to saying it to appease the psychologist. But it's pretty clear that Shirley did experience hallucinations and intrusive thoughts. After serving most of her time in prison, Shirley was released on parole in 2004. But when it was discovered that she was in possession of a lighter, she was quickly sent back for violating terms of release. And a year after that, she finally completed the full eight years in prison. But based on what happened next, letting Shirley loose into the outside world again was an extremely dangerous decision. One that would lead authorities to literally digging up her deepest, darkest secrets. On November 28th of 2006, Shirley was staying with a group of acquaintances out in an apartment in Pierpont, New York. One other person who lived there was a woman by the name of Connie, who had a nearly two-year-old boy named Ryan Rivers. In a bizarre twist of fate, Ryan was actually related to the same family whose children died in the mysterious fire that we mentioned earlier. The same fire that, it's important to note, Shirley wasn't proven to have been responsible for. However, as we all know, Strange and tragic things tend to happen around Shirley Winters. So on this late November evening, that was only a few days before Ryan's birthday, Connie was frantically searching around the apartment looking for her son. After first entering his playroom and not seeing him there, she passed Shirley on the way to the bathroom. And when she went inside, she discovered Ryan in the bathtub. But right away, it became clear that something was terribly wrong. In the bathtub, Ryan was submerged in a few inches of water and appeared to be unconscious. 
Immediately, Connie began trying to do all that she could to revive him. But ultimately, her efforts failed. And after, Ryan was taken to a hospital where they officially pronounced him dead. Another terrible tragedy that just so happened to take place right next to Shirley Winters. But following an autopsy on the two-year-old Ryan Rivers' body, the medical examiner identified a few suspicious details. Although the official cause of death was drowning, what was equally as important was how he drowned. First of all, Ryan was afraid of taking baths, so he would have never gotten into the water by himself. Second, the amount of water in his lungs was disproportionate to the amount that there would have been had he drowned naturally. Third, he had bruises on his temple. And fourth, there was evidence of rubbing alcohol in his bloodstream. Therefore, it's possible that he could have been given that before he was placed in the bathtub. But before authorities could piece all of this together, in the meantime, Shirley appeared to be breaking down mentally. Only a week after the suspicious death of Ryan Rivers, there was yet again another contentious encounter between Shirley and a police officer. According to the report, Shirley Winters was driving a pickup truck and swerving on the road when the police officer decided to pull her over. After, he walked around to her driver's side window and asked for her license and registration, though something was clearly off about her. One of the first things that the officer noticed about her was that her appearance was extremely ragged. Not only was her shirt torn up, but she had bloodstains on her outfit and scratch marks all over her upper body. And right away, the officer heard her mumbling under her breath, the evil has to stop. The evil is trying to get out. Naturally, the officer was a bit thrown off by this, but after they spoke for a bit longer, she then informed him that she hadn't taken her medication for schizophrenia that day and claimed that she had gotten lost on her way to a psychiatric hospital. And while nothing directly resulted from this incident, it's still an interesting anecdote. But before long, Shirley Winters was now living in a new trailer in a different trailer park in March of 2007. And just a few weeks after one last suspicious fire took place in the trailer park, she tried to finish herself off by taking an excessive amount of medication. In the end, though, she failed, and a year after the boy's death, Shirley Winters was served an indictment for the drowning of Ryan Rivers by the St. Lawrence County authorities. During the course of the authorities' investigation into the case, they decided to take a deeper look at Shirley's prior history, and more specifically, the deaths of her three children. As part of this deep dive, they dug up the bodies of her children in order to figure out how they actually died. And what they discovered was pretty alarming. As we already alluded to earlier, all three children had injuries unrelated to the fires. Upon learning this, Shirley received an additional indictment from the Onondaga County authorities for the murder of her son Ronald Winters III, whom she actually suffocated to death but blamed on SIDS. So within the span of a few months, Shirley now had two separate indictments for murder. One for Ronald nearly 30 years before, and one for Ryan only a year before. And after so many years of getting away with countless destructive and even deadly crimes, Shirley Winters was finally placed on trial for murder. Once the defense and prosecution had both finished pleading their cases, Shirley was officially sentenced to two concurrent prison sentences in June of 2008. One for 20 years for the first degree manslaughter of Ryan Rivers, and another for eight and a half years for the first degree manslaughter of Ronald Winters III. As for the other children who died and were shown to have evidence of blunt force trauma, Colleen and John, well, because of a plea deal, these investigations were discontinued. So unfortunately, there won't be justice for the other kids. Now, overall, the case of Shirley Winters is about the strong relationship between trauma, mental disorders, and family. What this sick and evil woman did to those children can never be justified under any circumstances. But at least she's finally serving some time for her crimes. 
I hope Ronald and Ryan and the rest of the unfortunate souls that came across Shirley's fiery path of blood and ashes are all resting peacefully. But anyways, thank you for watching this episode of High Time Crime. If true crime is your thing, then please subscribe and hit the like button because that's all we do. I also have a second account with my brother named Horrifying where we tell stories about everything paranormal. This includes true crime, mysteries, and things that are just downright spooky. I'd greatly appreciate if you subscribe to that too. I hope you have a great rest of your day. Take care, friend.